Hello students, I hope you are all fine and in good health. In this audio presentation, I will continue with the remaining part of the lesson Lost Spring. As you know, uh, this part is related with Mukesh and the tragic condition or the tragic plight uh, faced by Mukesh and his family members and not only Mukesh, 20,000 children like him who suffer day in and day out in damp, dingy environment and preparing glass bangles instead of going to school or instead of educating themselves. And even their parents are forcing their children uh, to uh, practice this art of making bangles even from a very young age. And thus, we can say their condition is deplorable, very much deteriorating. And uh, the sad part that already been told to you earlier, dear students, that they often lose their eyesight. They often lose their eyesight. They become blind. Sometimes they become semi-blind also. So let me continue. Savita, a young girl in a drab pink dress, sits alongside an elderly woman, soldering pieces of glass. As her hands move mechanically, like the tongs of a machine, I wonder if she knows the scantity of the bangles she helps make. Now, Sabita is uh, learning uh, the mechanism of preparing glass bangles. Now, the author, she is thinking that uh, do Sabita actually knows the purity and the scantity of the bangles that she is preparing? It symbolizes an Indian woman's suhag, auspiciousness, very much holy. It is something related with marriage ritual. Auspiciousness in marriage. It will dawn on her suddenly one day when her head is draped with a red veil, her hands dyed red with henna or mehendi as you can say, and red bangles rolled onto her wrist. She will then become a bride. Now she is a young girl, but one day she herself will become a bride. Like the old woman beside her, who became one many years ago. Remember at the very beginning of this paragraph, we get to know that Savita was not alone. Uh, while she was preparing the glass bangle, she was actually helping or she was under the care and guidance of an elderly old woman who might be uh, training Savita, a young girl of how to prepare glass bangles. This woman, uh, she is a widow right now, but she was once a bride. Like the old woman beside her, who became one many years ago, she still has bangles on her wrist, but no light in her eyes. That means she became blind. She is now completely blind. She has bangles on her wrist, but she is now completely blind. And here I quote, it's a very important dialogue. Ek wakt servar khana bhi nahi khaya. She says in a voice drained of joy. She has not enjoyed even one full meal in her entire life. This is very pathetic. This actually exposes the miserable, pitiable or rather to be said the deplorable condition of the bangle makers that they do a lot but ultimately it seems that they are exploited and who exploit them? The money lenders, the shahukars, the middlemen, the policemen, everyone and they are victims and it seems that they can't get out of it of this vicious circle as we'll get to know later so this is very unfortunate she haven't had a square meal in her lifetime like the old woman beside her who became one many years ago she still has bangles on her wrist but no light in her eyes i'm repeating this lines few lines dear students ek work serve her khana bhi nahi khaya she says in a voice drained of joy. She has not enjoyed even one full meal in her entire 
lifetime. She haven't enjoyed a one full meal also in her entire lifetime. That's what she has reaped. She labored so hard. It was a life of hardship. It was a life of struggles. But surprising thing is that she haven't eaten a square meal or a full meal throughout her entire lifetime. This is something very much unfortunate. That's what she has reaped. Her husband, an old man with a flowing beard, says, I know nothing except bangles. Her husband also told that she knows nothing except bangles. All I have done is to make a house for the family to live in. I already told you all, dear students, that they are exploited. After working so hard throughout their life, they can only manage to build a shack or a house or something like a house with a roof over their head. That is all they had prepared. But they toiled extremely hard. But they haven't reaped the benefits of their hard labor, never in their life. The cry of not having money to do anything except carry on the business of making bangles, not even enough to eat, rings in every home. The young men echo the lament of their elders. Little has moved with time, it seems, in Firozabad. Years of mind-numbling toil have killed all initiative and the ability to dream. Nothing had changed. They, whatever the elders had practiced, even now the younger generation is doing the same hard toil. Nothing had changed over the years. It remained the same. And the ability to dream has been now totally or completely aborted. No one has the audacity, no one practically has any sort of confidence to try anything new out of the box. They are all doing the same hard task each and every moment, each and every time, each and every year. The other, the older generation they did, now they are training the younger generation in the same way. Why not organize yourselves into a cooperative? I ask a group of young men who have fallen into the vicious. Vicious means something that is evil. Something that is bad company, we can say. Vicious, a circle of middlemen who trapped their fathers and forefathers. Even if we get organized, we are the ones who will be hauled up by the police, beaten and dragged to jail for doing something illegal. Now, when the author Anis Jung suggested, uh, of, uh, uh, suggested of making themselves into a cooperative, the group of young men with whom uh, she was actually having a conversation, they collectively told her that if we get organized somehow, then we are faced with some drastic consequences. Sometimes the policemen, they arrest us. Then we are taken inside the police prison. Then we are being beaten. And sometimes we are charged with some illegal activities. And uh, we face a lot of problems. If we try to uh, do something on our own, that means that one thing they lack, to be honest, they lack a progressive leader among them. They lack a courageous progressive leader among them. So if they try to take an initiative to build a cooperative among themselves, if they try to take a new initiative to dream something else, it seems that every time they end up on the wrong line and they are taken into the police custody, beaten badly by the police officials and charges of illegal activities were given against them which practically is not the truth, but they had to face it. There is no leader among them, no one who could help them see things differently. That is what dear students just now I told that they lack a good leader. They don't have a good leader among them. Who will tell them 
or who will actually lead them into a different way. They don't have a good leader among them. That is their big problem. They don't have anyone who will guide them. Who will guide them in this particular case. They don't have any progressive minded, confident, courageous leader. They don't have anyone. And that is the reason they face so much of problem. Uh, so let me continue. There is no leader among them. No one who could help them see things differently. Their fathers are as tired as they are. They talk endlessly in a spiral that moves from poverty to apathy to greed and injustice. It seems that they are actually the real sufferers. And it seems that injustice, greed, all these things have totally poverty, greed, injustice. All these things have totally entangled their life. Now, no matter how desperately they try, they can't move out of this. Listening to them, I see two distinct worlds. Distinct means very much separate from one another. One of the family caught in a wave of poverty, burdened by the stigma of caste in which they are born. The other are vicious. Vicious means something very cruel, crooked-minded, shrewd-minded, a uh, circle of the shaukars, the middlemen, the policemen, the keepers of law, the bureaucrats and the politicians. Each of them are dangerous to these people and each of them makes these poor people victims. And ultimately, they are the one who reaps, reaps the benefit of uh, profits from them. From them means from people like Mukesh and others. And people like Mukesh and others who try a lot, ultimately it is of no avail. It seems that their life is moving towards doomsday. It seems that their life is totally doomed. And if any one of them tries to rise up and take the initiative, it seems that that person gets behind the bars, beaten up badly. Illegal activity cases are thrust on him or on, on a group of people, ultimately they had to surrender because they had no option. They are totally entangled within a cobweb and that cobweb is controlled by many uh, vicious minded people. Among them, the policemen are there, the bureaucrats are there, the politicians are there, the middlemen are there, the keepers of law are there. Now, how can they emerge out of this vicious circle? There lies the actual reality. How they will come out of this? They need a leader. They need a leader who will take them out of this. But is it possible? Is that leader is still among them? Very hard to come to terms with life for, uh, and very hard for them also to think about new things to take new initiative because they are they want a leader they actually really want a leader night i mean right now but it seems that that leader is not present among them and that is the reason they are subjugated suppressed and they are tortured beaten ruthlessly exploited by a vicious circle of middlemen policemen bureaucrats politicians saukars everyone in total make their life a living hell and they had to yield and surrender to their advices to their plans so let me continue together they have imposed the baggage on the child that he cannot put down and that is the reason from the very beginning a child born in the caste of bangle makers can't dream of anything else rather than preparing bangles that is the main thing so now I'm moving on. Before he is aware, he accepts it as naturally as his father. To do anything else would mean to dare. And daring is not part of his growing up. Now to do anything differently is that he is daring. He is getting a bit courageous. And that is not his nature. He has not been treated, neither he has been guided to do something out of the box like this. So I repeat. To do anything else would mean to dare, and daring is not part of his growing up. When I sense a flash of it in Mukesh, I am cheered. I want to be a motor mechanic, he repeats. 
he will go to a garage and learn the and learn but the garage is a long way from his home i will walk now mukesh had the courage to think a bit differently though he is preparing bangles he is learning this art of bangle making because he is born in a family of bangle makers but he had the courage and the determination to at least think differently he wants to go to a garage he wants to be a motor mechanic in the near future though uh, the garage is uh, a few distance away from his house but still he is very determined to learn it there lies the high spirit there lies the determination i will walk look at the determination despite the distance is quite long it doesn't matter to him he wants to walk he wants to go and he wants to learn so let me move on uh, but the garage is a long way from his home i will walk he insist do you also dream of flying a plane he is suddenly silent no he says staring at the ground staring means looking fixedly that means when the author told that do you want to be a pilot or uh, do you dream of becoming a pilot do you want really to be a pilot but suddenly uh, he grew silent and he says no staring at the ground in a small murmur there is an embarrassment that has not yet turned into regret he is content to dream of cars that he sees hurtling down the streets of his town few airplanes fly over ferozabad now it is something few airplanes fly over ferozabad but cars are something that he sees day in and day out so he wants to be a motor mechanic and hopefully he wants to have a garage of his own later in his life but he doesn't wants to be a pilot and doesn't he wants to fly a plane because few planes fly over ferozabad but cars are something that's quite normal that he sees every time so he wants to drive a car later in his life but before that he wanted to be a motor mechanic so look at the last line once again uh, in his small murmur there is an embarrassment that has not yet turned into regret he is content to dream of cars that is he is hurtling down the streets of his time he is satisfied to dream about cars only few airplanes fly over ferozabad now it is uh, i mean it is something that he never ever crossed his dream also of flying a plane but few cars a uh, few planes fly over ferozabad that is the reason but uh, many cars goes on i mean moving around ferozabad and is very much interested to be a motor mechanic that is his dream but since he is born in the family of bangle makers he is uh, learning this art because he had no option but he created a dream in his mind that i want to have a garage of my own and i want to be a motor mechanic but since he is born in the caste of bangle makers he is doing this profession but this is not the profession that he likes okay dear students so i end it here this chapter is completed this was the last part that was left related with case study of the story number 2 that was related with mukesh sahib's part already i discussed with you our uh, dear students kindly go through this audio presentation and if there is any doubt anywhere let me know about it thank you students thank you all